Hello, my name is Dr. Aaron Dishno, and I'm the inventor of Walk the Web 3D Browsing. And this tutorial, we're going to continue on creating our 3D building, and we're going to be using 3D building blocks. Now, 3D building blocks are 3D shapes. They're your boxes and your spheres and cylinders and cones and all the other shapes that you can use to create your 3D building. Um, same thing we use for 3D things and 3D communities. So what we want to do is, first of all, if you haven't already, go to 3d.walktheweb.com, uh, log in, and go to the admin mode page just by clicking the link at the top of the menu. And from there, if you haven't done it, uh, select your 3D building and load the demo 3D building that we started in the earlier tutorial. Basically, it's the foundation of the building. We're, we haven't created anything else yet. So now when you've opened that up, uh, underneath My 3D Buildings, the lowest uh, setting there is Edit 3D Building. Click that. And the very top item is Add 3D Building Block. Now this gives you the list of all the various items that you can add. Uh, we have walls, floors, box, cylinder, half pipe, cone, sphere, dome, triangle, torus, uh, polygon, plane, disc, tube, line. There's all kinds of objects you can work with but for this tutorial we're going to start with a box. I want to point out that a wall, a floor, and a box are technically all boxes. But when you're working with them, the wall, um, it's a quick way to make things because when you say you want to load a wall, it'll come up with one width, 20 high, and 20 wide in the direction rotated in front of you uh, so that it starts wherever you're standing. When you work with a box, it's always going to come up as a 20 by 20 by 20 uh, units. And when you work with floors, they start as a flat plane uh, with a Y, uh, the height is being one, and having a X and Z uh, value for its size. Now, there is one more thing different about a floor than the walls and all the other shapes. In the editor settings, just when you're in admin mode, there's a setting that actually allows you to pass through uh, and turn off wall collisions or floor collisions separately. So like if I want to, I'm building something and I haven't made any doors yet, but I need to go inside and check where something lines up or I want to add something inside and I haven't made any openings into the building yet, I can turn off wall collisions, walk right through it, be able to build inside and then walk out afterwards and look at it from all sides. Floor collisions are separate because if you created like a second floor of a building or a third floor, you could still walk around with gravity on and be able to just take yourself and stay on that level yet walk through walls and still be on that same height of the building that you're working on, the, the level of the floor. Okay, so for this case, um, when you add something though, the first thing to note is it is dependent on where you move on the screen. So no matter where you want to go, if you point yourself in any direction and kind of center yourself where you want it to go, click Add Box, it'll create a box in front of you. Now from there, there's three major positionings that you're going to do, or three major settings. One is the position. The second is the scaling, which is the length of the box in all three directions, and then the box rotation on its three different axes. Now, when you do the box position, the box position is calculated from the center of the box. So, uh, notice when you change its size, the position, it's still in the same location on the screen. Okay. So, the first thing we want to do is... Um, Actually, look at the box position. For example, box position uh, Y. There, each one of these settings have a place where you can type in the value. And um, whenever you change the value there, notice it doesn't do anything with the box until you move your cursor to something else. When the form gets a focus on any other part of the form, then it'll move the box. So it may not happen immediately when you type something, but you can physically type in a value and it will try to move, you know, it'll move as soon as you move your cursor around or something. Next, you can use the plus one and minus one uh, arrows, and that will move it up or down. This is kind of getting it in the rough area that you want it to be. And then once you get it there, what you can use is the uh, negative point zero one and plus zero one points, and you'll be able to fine tune it and get it exactly where you'd like it. 
So in this case, I'm going to move the box to the front edge of the screen. Let's see, I'm going to move its X position forward. And notice it does have labels. The side with the label on, for example, move Y on top of it, is the positive direction of movement. So move Z is to the left, and move X is behind it there. Okay, and so with the different positions, let's see, we want to center the box on the wall. Okay, now I'm going to scale the wall, and I can shrink it down to one width for our typical wall. And I want to make it 20 high. Now I want to make it, to fit the foundation that we're using, I want to make it 99 long. Now I just happen to know that the new foundation was 99 or was 100 and so staying inside of it I wanted this 99 to get a basically three inch uh, border around it for the wall. So if you notice the corner of the wall is right there. When you highlight over something notice it also becomes transparent so it does give you a little bit of a view so you can see if something's deep into something or how they overlap. And then we're going I'm going to go ahead and move this up a little bit okay so that the bottom of the wall is right at the foundation so it ends up being at 1050 okay and note if I walk to the other end of the wall I am that distance from that side and I want to move it over just a little bit farther so 49 okay and notice you can also rotate if I were to rotate this wall the whole wall is moving in that direction uh, whichever axis you pick I'll put it back at zero for now okay then there's some other settings have to do with covering we're gonna to get to that in a later tutorial but for now let's just go ahead and save this box now anytime you've saved a box or any type of shape that you're working with if you'd like to change it again or edit it again all you have to do is move your mouse over it and right click your mouse button and it'll reselect it and now you can work with it again when you're all done all you have to do is scroll down and click save and it'll save wherever you left it now instead of recreating three more boxes the same way there's also another shortcut so let's say I put a lot of time into creating this box the right size and the right height and everything else that I wanted it you can right click on an item scroll down and near the bottom is create a duplicate item now when you create a duplicate item the first thing you want to do is move yourself where you plan on creating the next item so that you're close to where it's going to be then if you click create a duplicate item it'll create the item that you had selected a copy of it and notice if I turn around the other one's still there so you now have a full copy of the first one that you created now all we have to do is position this one since we have the shape and length of it and everything all set the same way the first one was all we have to do is put that one at a positive 49 uh, notice the only two values that change when you copy something like that is the Z and X position. So it'll retain the Y position, so the height of whatever the first object was, but the X and Z positions will, will come from wherever you're facing to be in front of you. So then all we have to do is center it, put it right where we want it to be. Oh, we're at 2, let's go to 0. And now we can save that side of the box now we have two sides two walls so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to create a third wall over here I'm going to select one of the two walls I've already created it really doesn't matter which one you pick since we copied it they're the same thing I'm going to face the center of the where I want the third wall to be scroll down and then create a duplicate item and well notice the rotation was the same way as the first one if we had created a new wall it would have been rotated in our direction but in this case all we have to do is come down to rotate Y and 
I can type in 90 or I can manually hold it down until it gets there. Once I've rotated it that direction, now all I have to do is center the wall and instead of negative 35, I want that to be negative 49 just like I did all the other walls. Okay, now I can save that wall. And one last time, since I rotated that one already, I'll just copy that wall and create a duplicate item. Puts it out here. I center the wall. Set that at 49. Another thing I'm doing is we have the value where you can type that in. Well, when you have the rough adjustment or fine-tuned adjustments, if you hold it down, it will keep on repeating, so it'll happen pretty quickly. Otherwise, you can just click it fast, and it'll go just one click. And finally, when you get that right where you'd like it to be, if I click Save Box, we now have four walls for our basis of our building. And let's see, that takes care of this part of the tutorial. Um, you can play around with some of the other shapes. What you're going to find is that um, some of the shapes have some extra settings. For example, if you create a cone, you're going to have a radius of the top and the bottom of the cone. So you can have an open-ended cone. You can have a, uh, you know, different widths uh, so it doesn't have to come to a point. You can actually make a funnel out of it. Uh, there's all kinds of things you can do. Another thing that happens with the uh, building shapes is in a later lesson I'm going to show you how we can actually take one shape and cut a piece out of another shape. So that makes them practically unlimited the number of shapes we can create. So, But we'll get to that in a few minutes. Uh, so for now um, that concludes this part of the tutorial and uh, if you have any questions or you want to see other tutorials you can always go to www.walktheweb.com Thank you very much.